What's lit, hackers? I'm Hacker Warehouse TV, and this is another episode of your host, Troy Brown. Today we're chilling at DEF CON 25 with Joe Fitz, who's going to tell us about Secure Token and rolling your own Doobie Keys. So, thanks for joining us. How are you doing today? Pretty good. Pretty relieved now the talk's over. Yeah, you just finished. Um, so, just give us a, like an elevator description of your talk. So, we went messing around. We, we found a bunch of different hardware security devices that people use, and these are all really great things because we can put our trust in a small little device instead of having to put our trust in our whole software stack or mm -hmm. you know our passwords. So we, get, we use these for two-factor authentication. Okay. But people don't uh, realize like they need to question these hardware devices. They can't implicitly trust them. So we just showed a, different, a couple different ways that people maybe uh, misinterpret the safe and good ways to use these devices that we can take advantage of. Okay. And what were some of those target devices? So the two that we presented and released today were uh, an RSA secure ID token okay. and a YubiKey. Um, for the Secure ID token, we actually made a, a modification to implant to them so that it would broadcast those pins that it generates as uh, over Bluetooth. Wow. Um, and then for the YubiKey, we kind of came up with a process where we could slip into the supply chain and uh, make counterfeit YubiKeys that would uh, leak out their private keys. So slip in the supply chain. How easy would that be to kind of clone and then sync those devices? Well, well the idea came to me. I was at a conference, and someone was giving out free YubiKeys. And so I was like, oh, I don't, need, I don't have a YubiKey. Let me grab one. And I'm like, wait a minute. Can I take more than one? So I grabbed <laughs> a handful. And I was like, OK, now I got these YubiKeys. I got them for free. Yeah. But are they real? And all the information I could track down really didn't give me comp uh, confidence in knowing that they were real. So we came up with a process where we could take a real YubiKey, clone it with a fake YubiKey. We burned the YubiKey in the process. And then we would have this fake YubiKey that would have some additional properties. So what are some things that can be done to help prevent cloning of the modules? Well, so they do a, lot, a good job of making a device that's pretty difficult to fake, okay. to, 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 to duplicate. So we had some issues. But again, it's a hardware device. It's an inexpensive hardware device. It's only a few components. You know, you got enough money, you can make a fake one easily. Okay. Um, but having a process where we could verify that it is a legitimate YubiKey, YubiKey mm -hmm. um, is really valuable. And so that's, that's what they've got to some degree. We've found some loops around that. You and know. you said the vendors have already started to do a fix? Yeah, we, we actually were lucky we got to talk to them today. And that's they, great. they made one change. Uh, so we're using a user uploaded key. And what they did is they changed a prompt. So when you verify your YubiKey, mm -hmm. it'll tell you whether you're verifying a genuine, you know, original ah, key brilliant. or a user uploaded key. That's great. Yeah, it's a yeah. very simple fix. Again, we don't think that YubiKeys are bad or anything like that. They're great. I mean, everybody should be using devices like this. We were just kind of pointing out that people sometimes trust these hardware devices a little bit too much, and maybe yeah. they shouldn't. And that's exactly how it should work. I mean, yeah. you're pointing out flaws in the system. Yep. You know, the vendors approaching the researcher and saying, hey, good job, we'll make a change, and now yeah. you've affected a product. Excellent yeah. job. And it was great because, you know, we're pointing out hardware issues, and they have a very simple software change yeah. that, that, you know, doesn't resolve it, but it, it makes it, you know, le less of an issue. Very cool. Well, let's shift gears a little bit and talk a little bit about the badge you're wearing that is amazing. So I've got the, the 503 party badge. So 503 is Portland's area code. So a bunch of us from Portland, Southwest Washington uh, got together and developed a badge. Um, and you know, it's actually themed, you know, being Oregon, we have a covered wagon badge and we've got two uh, laser cut uh, wooden wheels that act as directional pads. And it <laughs> plays a little uh, ultralight version of the Oregon Trail. That's um, great. We built it based off of a, a Regato Bluetooth module, okay. uh, which has an ARM4 and Bluetooth connectivity all in one. So it's pretty cool. Very cool, very clean design. And you had a couple games on there, right? Yeah, so I mean, if you go into a certain mode, you have the hunting mode. And you might be familiar with the vendor badges that are floating around the conference. We just gave you a way to go and hunt vendors. <laughs> So. That's awesome. That's perfect. So tell us what goes into some of the other things you do running B-Sides PDX. So um, I'm the event coordinator for B-Sides Portland, um, which is uh, pretty much the only open security conference in Oregon. Okay. Um, and, you know, we've been... We've been on a roll the past few years. We run it every year at the convention center. It's growing every year. Last okay. year, we were lucky to have uh, Senator Ron Wyden as our keynote speaker. Oh, wow. Um, this year, we're going to have Mara Tam talking uh, on Saturday. Um, and, you know, it's it's the only information security conference in Portland, so we've kind of got our, our hacking, our uh, InfoSec day, our professional yeah. day, and our hacking and break all the things day. Oh, cool. Uh, it turns into a good uh, event. It's uh, October 20th and 21st in Portland, Oregon. So Awesome. And you said it keeps growing every year. I mean, this year, uh, we're taking bets on how many people are here. Last year at DEF CON 24, there was 22,000. Do you have any guesses how many people are here? Uh, you know, 
I'm sure there's a few people who didn't make it because of uh, interesting travel issues these year, these days, but yeah. there's probably a lot of people who are here because of the anniversary, so it's got to be more than 22. Yeah, yeah. I'm betting around 30 or 40, maybe. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. maybe. Some, somewhere under 30, I would So guess. how many people show up at the B-Sides event you're talking about? Um, last year, we had over 450 people. Wow, that's um, which pretty cool. the biggest we've had it, so we'll... Well, we're planning for about that again this year. Excellent. And then I heard you had some training coming up maybe in November or something like that? Yeah, so I teamed okay. up with uh, several other guys who do hardware security hacking, and we put together a, a training-only event, so hardware security dot training. Okay. Because, you know, training is now a top-level domain. So hardware security dot training. It's a URL. Um, so there's five of us that are doing a handful of classes, October, uh, sorry, November 6th through 9th okay. in San Francisco. Um, and, you know, we're, we're, gonna, we're looking to have some uh, speakers come in at lunchtime. So you show up, you get two or four days of training, you get one quick talk on someone doing cool stuff in hardware security. Yeah. And uh, have a good time. That's cool. That's cool. Oh, well, back to kind of, uh, back to your research a little bit. So this particular talk, uh, you're here today. When did you start on this particular subject? Like, when was the beginning of the research on... Secure elements. I mean, you mentioned that someone gave you the YubiKey. Is yeah. that when it really started? So yeah, that was October when I got that YubiQ. That's when when that piece started. Okay. But uh, what's the other one? The RSA tokens. I've, I've had a bag of them that I've kind of pondered about. What happens is basically I've got projects I've started and never done anything, and then I'm like, oh, it's time for a CFP. Let's see what I got. Yeah. And so I rounded up a handful of devices, uh, and uh, Mike had done done several as well. And we said, okay, what are the, what are the ones that match together thematically? Yeah. So, okay, let's let's take all our hardware devices that we packed, our hardware security devices we packed on, and put it together. And this is what it ended up with. Were there any? Was it smooth sailing the whole way, or did you guys have any hiccups? Did you have any funny oh, stories that happened along the way at all? You know, I think the way our, our, we like to develop a presentation is tell everybody the many, many, many ways that we screwed up, yeah. as opposed to what we finally did in the end. Um, Board issues, more board issues, you know, design issues, code issues, um, all the way down to in the middle of our presentation, um, suddenly the laptop mouse stopped working. So we had to reboot the laptop and you know, you know, <laughs> chat up the audience for a few minutes while we got the demo rebooted. But in the end, in the end, the demo worked. Which the, is great. the demo gods were shining. Yeah, you know, that's awesome. So, what are some other thing, awesome things you've been working on lately? Oh, I've got so many projects on that I can't even remember that. <laughs> Any you can share? Anything you'll be working on for next year? Anything like that come to mind? You know, we just took a walk through the, the election hacking village. Okay. Um, which, uh, sorry, the voting machine hacking village. Yes. I think there's a difference between those two, right? Okay, I think maybe. Uh, maybe. One, one's a little more social engineering. <laughs> um, and there's, there's been a lot of devices that have fallen. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know. There's a lot, there's a few devices that we haven't they haven't gotten firmware off of that yet. So okay. we'd like to kind of look into that and also pondering. You know, we I've done a lot of implanty type stuff. Build a little hardware device to implant it. Yep. I bet there's some pretty cool implants we could get on those voting machines. Yeah, we took a walk over yeah. there yesterday. It looked uh, like there's some low hanging fruit for sure. Lots of empty space in there to pump in extra boards. Yeah. Do you have any advice for uh, maybe some people that are just now seeing your research? They want to do something of their own. So my focus is hardware stuff, and really. The way you get into hardware stuff is you just start taking crap apart. Yeah. You know, anytime you see like a clearance bin with something electronic in it, grab one, rip it apart, take take look take a look inside. And it's really just repeatedly looking at things, understanding what's in them, identifying parts that you'll finally get to the point where, you know, oh wow, I've seen that chip before and now I know how to dump firmware off of it and now I know how it runs and I know how to reprogram it. Yeah. And the skills the skills build very quickly. Do you have a favorite tool you like to use as you're developing? You know, I've used this this, this BMD module. Uh, Regato is a company in Portland, uh, sorry, in Oregon. Yeah. They make these. I've used these in the RSA token. I use them on this badge. I've got a couple other projects I've been playing with them. I've had a lot of fun with those. And then one tool I just I, I really love. I use them in training that I give is uh -huh. uh, Soleil Logic Analyzers. Oh yeah. They're 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 awesome. They're easy to use, and uh, I love them. So. What in general? What's your favorite part about DEF CON? You know, what I really like about DEF CON versus every other conference is the number of villages you can go to, sit down, and watch people, or work with people, or do yourself, uh, take things apart, hack them. Yeah. Um, and I don't see that as much in other conferences that are more focused on the talks and the presentations and stuff. So I really like that about DEF CON. That's pretty cool. That and all the social events that you know community groups put together. Like uh, we did a, a bunch of 503 guys, Portland guys did a uh, 503 party last night. So, oh, cool. Yeah. Any advice you'd give to people coming to DEF CON for the first time? You know, all the talks are recorded and they're going to be put online later. But yeah. those villages, uh, workshops, those are only going to happen at DEF CON. So take advantage of those. That's a good point. That's a good point. Well, Joe, I think that's it. Uh -huh. Thanks so much for talking with us today. Great.
If our viewers at home want to learn more about what you're doing or rolling their own hardware, where's a good place for them to look? Um, so my website's securinghardware.com. Okay. And the training website is hardwaresecurity.training. Okay. Um, and there's half a dozen of us who, who all do hardware security training, so we're, we're keen okay. to get people doing more hardware stuff. Well, perfect, perfect. We'll put all the links to that in the description below on this video. Uh -huh. Joe, thanks again for talking with us today. Cool. Thanks for talking to you. If this talk got you feeling a little lifted, let us know with comments below and click subscribe while you're down there. This is Troy with Hacker Warehouse TV, and remember always, keep it between the laws. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks so much. Awesome.